they've never been under more pressure and need all the help they can get. Now they have reinforcements. These the first pictures of a new reality. The army, now part of the emergency services, getting trained up on how to drive ambulances. We've got army, navy and RAF um, in their day jobs as either engineers, Royal Signals communicators, staff officers in headquarters. Um, it really is a mix of jobs. Some have been out on operations, some are, some are back in the UK. Um, so they'll be going from their normal jobs um, out to work full time with South Central Ambulance Service. Traffic lights ahead. Are those traffic lights want you to turn right? So we have at peak times on a normal working week about 180 ambulances operational across South Central region. Our modelling for coronavirus shows we probably need about 240 or more. So by the military coming in to support us with their co-responders, being out in the ambulances, we're going to probably get 20 to 30 extra ambulances per day out operational to help the demand as that increases over the coming weeks. But they're not completely new to this. They are all already volunteers as co-responders with South Central Ambulance Service in their spare time. A force of 80 of them have been drafted in and now they're full-time members of the team. They've got a range of new duties. So they're doing conversion courses, they're changing from cars to, to ambulances, so they're driving bigger vehicles. Um, our staff wouldn't normally work in the call centres but they're being trained now to take calls and to work on the computer systems to dispatch and finally they'll also be trained to deal with the patient transport, so manual handling and moving patients to and from the hospitals. One of those drivers is Major Allen's husband, also a major in the army. Together they normally co-run the military responder team. Uh, we're on day two of three. Uh, I, uh, I think it's going well. Um, I'm waiting for the feedback from my instructor, but all, all seems positive so far. It's good because normally we drive the uh, Ford Mondeo cars. Um, it's moving on to a bigger vehicle, so it's getting used to the size and the capabilities and the weight of a new vehicle as well. But so far it's going quite well. And the public probably won't know the difference between whether they're receiving help from the military or regular staff. We are not wearing military uniform because um, we, we want to make sure we give the best possible care to patients and we want to turn up and, and deliver that care and us being in military uniform may distract from the care that we're going to provide. So we're there to act and we've been fully trained by South Central Ambulance Service and there is no difference between the qualifications that we have and the skills that are being delivered by the service itself. Thank you. Last week, thousands across the country and the military at home and abroad clapped in support of NHS workers and carers. You could tell just how much that support means to the team here. It was very emotional. I think most people saw it on the telly. Uh, we all stepped outside our own houses and joined in with that. Uh, seeing my neighbours personally clap towards my house was quite an emotional time. As COVID-19 continues to change our everyday lives, these military personnel are adapting quickly as the military's role in helping the UK through this crisis gathers pace. I'm told they've been asked to help out here at the ambulance service for up to three months. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.